There's a scripture in Philippians 4 that I love. And it speaks to the power of transmission. Philippians 4, 6 through 7, it says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It speaks to the power of what happens when we take what we've been carrying to the Lord in prayer. When I take it to the Lord in prayer, I pour my heart out. And I say, God, this is what I've been carrying. God, this is what's been stored up inside of me. And when we lay it out before God, most of us just stop at that point and then we miss that the second part says that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds. There's something that happens. You pass on your burdens. You pass on what you've been carrying. And then God passes you back something else. When I lay it out before God, a transmission takes place. Now all of, a, all of a sudden where I once had the potential to be anxious, I now have the opportunity to have my heart and mind guarded and to experience peace. That means that when I am in prayer, I am in pursuit of the things in my life which are taking up capacity that no longer have the right to be there. And in exchange, I am asking God to give me peace for the area where I once had anxiety. That God would give me peace for the area where I once had worry. That God would give me peace. Not just peace, the kind of peace that we have for a minute, but the kind of peace that guards my heart and mind. Why do I need a guard around my heart and my mind? Because if I don't have a guard around my heart and my mind, I may end up engaging again in the very thing that God, that I laid down in my prayer closet. And so I need a guard against my own heart and mind. And that's what happens when we go in prayer and now we've gone to prayer and now I've made this exchange and now I have capacity, I have the ability now to create space for what God wants to do in my life. Because in order for us to be effective in this season, I heard God say that you're gonna to need to embody the revelation of who you are, who you are in his eyes. It's not part-time. It's not something you're waiting to step into, that you have been called to embody a word. He spoke a word that brought your life into existence. And if I am embodying my trauma, or if I am embodying the other things that have happened to me, I'm embodying stress, I'm embodying other people's responsibility, then I cannot embody the word that makes me effective in why I was brought into the earth. Jesus knew how to shake things off of him because he recognized that at the end of the day, I have been called to embody the word. And the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. The reason why I chose this text with Paul is because I don't think that there is another example as thorough as the life of Paul that helps us to understand what it is like to embody the call of God on our life. It seems like Paul was a peculiar choice, considering he was on the other side of what God was doing in the earth. He was persecuting Christians, persecuting believers of the way. He was not on our side at all. And yet he has an encounter on the road, of Damas on the road to Damascus, Damascus that lets us know that that conversion took place. And he went from embodying the belief of who he thought he should be to embodying the belief of who God has called him to be. 
And when he moved and made this transition, one of the things that he tells us in Philippians that he learned in the process of embodying who God has called him to be is that in order for him to embody it effectively, that he has to forget those things that are behind. That means in order for him to be effective in the call, he could not keep on carrying not even the highlights of what had happened. He couldn't carry what happened behind him, who he used to be. In order for him to be effective in this moment, he had to forget those things that were behind. Why did he have to forget those things that were behind? Because in order for him to be present in this moment, he had to have a full integration of who he is right now. That means that I cannot afford to keep paying for the mistakes of who I was yesterday and step into who I'm called to be now. I can't be worried about what I'll look like tomorrow. I got to step into this moment right now. Sometimes the greatest prayer that you can pray is God, make me present in this moment right here. I don't want to miss what this moment has for me. I don't want to miss who I am supposed to be in this moment. So make me present, not just in my mind, make me present in my body when I'm having a conversation with my partner and I'm thinking about all of the ways they got it wrong and I'm thinking of all the things I could be doing instead of thinking about those things that are behind or thinking about what I'm going to say in the future. God, help me to be present in this moment so I don't miss what you're trying to do. Help me to be present when I am creating so that I don't miss the sound that you're trying to create. I don't want to be on autopilot. I want to be present in every moment. I don't want to just get busy raising the child and putting them on a routine that I miss the fact that they're going through a depression, that I miss the fact that they are self-harming. God, help me to respond in this moment. Help me to see it the way that you see it. God says, I'll take care of the future. Don't worry about that. You stay present in this moment. Why else do we celebrate that he has gone ahead of us and made our crooked path straight? That means I don't have to go ahead of me. He's got ahead of me covered. All I need to do is work where I am right now. So I am forgetting those things that are behind and I'm going to work where I am right now. God, make me present in every way possible to what this moment demands. I don't want to be stuck. I don't want to be trapped. And Paul manages to master this. Paul masters this so well that when my text begins, it says that God works unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. Starts off talking about his hands. But then it says, so that even his handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick. I like this text about the power of him embodying so fully his call that even the things that he wore were anointed enough to heal the sick. Oh, it's gonna get good in a minute. He was so locked into his purpose. He was so locked into who he needed to be in any given moment that even when they beat and wounded him and then threw him in prison, that Paul and Silas were still in the prison worshiping and singing songs because he was so locked into who he was called to be that even when he was up against persecution, even when he was in the midst of a trial, he still knew how to lock in with God and not lose focus. He knew how to lock in with God and make sure he could tap into a praise. He was so locked in that it was oozing out of his pores. He was so locked in that even when they beat him, all it did was produce more praise. Paul was the crazy man who kept talking about suffering, producing glory. And how else does the suffering produce glory unless he is fully in the suffering so that he can be fully in the glory? Oh, God, help me, because I feel like I'm about to turn the corner on this thing. The reason why you have to be fully present in your body is because when you're fully present, even in the suffering, you also get to be fully present even in the glory. The fact that Jesus was so moved with compassion that he felt it in his bowels means that when he was wounded for our transgression, 
he really felt that thing in his body. That means that when the chastisement of our iniquities were upon him, that he really felt it in his body. That means that when they nailed his hands to the cross, that he really felt that thing in his body. But when he was raised up, free and victorious, he really felt that in his body. So much so that he told Thomas, put your hands through the holes, because I'm telling you, I really felt glory happening in my body. I want somebody to know that it is possible to be so anointed that it rules it through your body, to be so anointed that you shift the atmosphere when you walk into a room, to be so anointed that when you step into the space, all of a sudden the conversation must be elevated because what God has done in me, before I even open my mouth, you can experience it by the way I carry my body. My body tells you I'm not the one. My body tells you that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. My body tells you that I went through hell and I know how to fight a devil. My body tells me, my body tells me. My body, my body makes it known. My body makes it known it's happening in my body. There was a woman who was so convinced that God could help her that when she heard that Jesus was in her town, that he was walking through the multitude and Jesus was so in tune with his body that when this woman was walking through, she had had an issue of blood for 12 years and she could feel the flow in her body, but she thought within herself, if I could just lock into Jesus, then maybe that thing that I've been feeling would finally stop flowing and so she ran up on Jesus and Jesus was so locked in that he said who touched me who touched me and they said no the multitude's thrown you how could you ask who touched you and he said I know that somebody touched me because I felt power come out of my body I felt power come out of my body but check this the woman was so locked in that when she touched him it says immediately the flow of blood stopped that means she was was so checked into what was happening with her body that she knew the moment she got healed. God help me, God help me, God help me. There's something going to happen in this room. When somebody touches the hem of his garment, the woman is so locked in. Anybody with a flow will tell you that you can't tell when the flow starts and you can't tell when the flow stops but life had backed her into a corner so much that she had to get sensitive about her body and when she got sensitive about her body when she locked into Jesus Jesus locked into her and there was an exchange that took place because their one body touched another body one body drew power from another body and now all of a sudden my body is saying this sign that I've been touched by power. I've been touched with breakthrough. There's Jesus, help me. Jesus was so anointed that it was on the hem of his garment. He was so anointed that it was on his clothes. He was so in touch with his body that he recognized that when she grabbed him, that she pulled something from him. And she was so in touch with what she needed that she knew that when she got the power, it healed her. I hear God saying that some of you been touching God, but you didn't touch him with a target. And because she touched him with a target in mind, she knew the very moment she got healed. I hear God saying that if you start taking that power and pointing it into the direction of where you need healing. You'll mess around and get healed in a way you didn't think was possible. You'll mess around and get breakthrough in a way you didn't even know was possible. I hear God saying, start looking for the signs in your body that I healed you. Start looking for the signs in your body that you made it to the other side. God says, you'll feel it in your body before you even denounce it to the crowd. You'll feel it in your body. God won't even know that you were healed until he makes the announcement that allows you to be seen. Because the woman with the issue of blood knew it before anybody else did. Man, I don't know who this is for. God, and I ask that you would give me wisdom because God told me to tell somebody that you could be healed and not know it if you don't lock in to what you've been praying and asking God for. God says you could be healed and not know it if you don't recognize where you need his power to show up in your life, you could be healed. Healed and not know it. 
And I gotta be honest to you, I prayed. And I asked God for healing to break out in this room. I asked God for courage to break out in this room. I asked God for there to be deliverance in this room that it would be undeniable because somebody locked in so heavily with what God was doing that they felt the power when it came out of heaven. I don't think there's anything more beautiful than when somebody starts having hands laid on them. But when the person on the other side wants the hands laid on them, there's something that happens when you lock into what the person is carrying and you recognize that they're carrying something that you need. Of course, a miracle breaks out because when you lock in, the Bible says it like this, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, wherever two or three lock in in my name, I'll be there in the midst. If you lock in, I'll show up in the way that you need me to. If you lock in in my midst, I'll allow healing to break through. If you lock in, it'll make all the difference. This woman, this woman with the issue of blood, she mastered the art of locking in. I chose this text. God revealed it to me because I believe God wanted me to understand and wanted you to understand that what happened with Paul is possible for you. That there is an opportunity for a fully integrated faith. An opportunity, child, my wig is up. Well, tell me about it. I don't care. Y'all don't think this is my hair, do you? <laughs> I really don't care. Because none of this is really necessary. Because I recognize what is really necessary. If the wig stay on or not, <laughs> if the shoes stay on or not, I know what I'm really here for. I understand that I came here to lock in on something. So you can make the memes and make the videos. At the end of the day, one thing I know for sure is that me and God locked in on a word. And if this is a distraction, then let it fall off. Because at the end of the day, I believe that I am called to bring breakthrough in this room. And if I'm in the way of the breakthrough, then move me out of the way. Because what I want more than anything is for him to have his way. So I'm locked in on what God wants to do in this place. And if miracles are gonna break out, then let a wig fall off. If miracles are going to break out, then let the shoes come off. If miracles are going to break out, y'all think I need this? I don't need this. I do it because it makes me look good. But at the end of the day, I know what's good. I know that if he goes before me, I know that if his spirit breathes in this room. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. I came for power. I came for breakthrough. I came so somebody could get healed. I came so somebody could experience the wonder work and power of God. I heard that God is still performing miracles. So I asked God to let me be a part of it. And I don't care if I gotta be embarrassed. If you get the glory at the end of the day, see, don't let it fool you. It's not that deep. It's not that deep. The worst thing you can do is make it about you when God is trying to use you. If you make it about you when God is trying to use you, you'll miss the moment when glory can come through you. So I, I'm locked in. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Let's go. What's up? We've been in a fight before. Now, wait a minute. When we've been in a fight before, do we or do we not? 
have to let a few things snatch off so that we can show them at the end of the day, I'm about it for real. I don't care what it takes. I got to make it to the other side. I don't care what it takes. Do you think the woman with the issue of blood cared about her hair? Do you think the woman with the issue of blood cared about what she looked like? The woman, all right, I'm about to take it off. It ain't never, it ain't never. you need to see it from the platform so you can do it with your platform. It ain't always gonna be cute. It ain't always gonna be pretty. But one thing's for sure, it's gonna always be God. And I don't care what they say about me. I care that he gets the glory when it's all said and done. She took her wig off too. We gotta get out of here. <laughs> Listen. Paul. Paul. Didn't mind. Paul. Paul didn't mind doing what it took in order to be who God needed him to be in any given moment. And it made it look so easy that the priest, the Jewish priest thought, I can just do what he did. I can just say what he said and it'll have the same results. But they didn't have his revelation. So they could not have his results. The power of the revelation of who you are to be in the earth requires that you embody it with such trust that you don't care what it looks like to other people. That you embody it with such confidence that even those who knew one version of you have to get known to that, have to get used to this new version of you. Paul knew how to embody this thing. I don't know who you are. But I promise you, one of the things I heard God say to me is that we have to embody the thing that we're talking about. Because God told me, I'm going to start whispering my truths in your body.
It's gonna be in your body. Stop talking to people. It's gonna be in your body. God says you're gonna feel my love in your body. You're gonna feel my healing in your body. You're gonna feel breakthrough in your body. I'm gonna put it in your body. The strength is gonna be in your body, the creativity, the path you're supposed to take. God says, check in with your body. Because I'm gonna start showing you by the way you feel. God says, I'm making you more sensitive than you've ever been. And if you've made a habit of overriding your body, then you'll miss who you are supposed to engage with, who you're supposed to walk away from. You'll make it a mind game. This isn't a mind game. This is a full body game. This is a full body game. If you don't believe me, ask Jesus. It was a full body game. Yes, I know you said this body is going to perish, and one day it is. But right now, God is using that body. And God wants you to honor that body and check in with that body. The last thing I'll say is this. When the magicians of the time heard what happened, God help me to say it. The revelation that Paul received was so powerful that it was oozing out of his pores. So powerful that it created imitators. But because the imitators didn't have that revelation, that evil spirit was able to jump on them. Paul was famous in hell. Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? You don't have no power to back up the thing you're trying to do. If you had some power, I would back up off of you. I hear God saying that when it's all said and done, I don't want you to be famous before man. I want you to be famous in hell. I want the demons to know your name. I want the devil to know your name. I want everyone to understand that that power you got was not just an encounter. It was a powerful lifestyle.